Hi everyone, it's Baron here again. All right, so we're live right now, and um, yeah, so we're just gonna wait for a while for some of our viewers to gather in. So maybe um, maybe just a little bit of small talk while we wait. Give me about let's give them about thirty seconds. The the great thing about live is right, most people are on time. Most viewers are on time when it comes to live. <laughs> So yeah, um, I see there are some comments over there. Uh, I see some somebody's uh, who who wrote in. Let's let's um, let's give those who are early. Let's uh, have a look at some of the changes we've made to um, our our live interface, right? Um, okay, let's have a look at our comment box. So we have a comment box here where um, you as a viewer will just enter your comments like normal, right? Uh, oh, okay, so I can see here there are already comments coming in. Thanks for being so interactive and so early. Um, who says hey? Who says hey? Hi, nice to see you guys again. Um, I think we more or less can start. Now, um, so we have our comment box here and any uh, questions that we see, uh, uh, that we see that that we need to answer, right? We will go right ahead and address it. So, um, so this is this is new. So, um, if there's anything, uh, just remember, Orca Torch is already watching us. So, uh, questions that I personally cannot answer, uh, Orca Torch will help us out. All right, so uh, let's begin. My name is Baron, and I'm a filmmaker from Wolfang Digital Video Production. Uh, you can see I will put on my social media handles over here. So I'm from Wolfang Digital Video Production. We are live streaming from Malaysia and going all the way to Orca Torch in China, and then to the rest of the world, you. It is night over here, not sure whether you can see if it's night, but we are night over here. It's eight o'clock our time. And uh, for those of you who just came in, uh, say hi, you know, uh, put down in the comments. We'd like to know where you're coming from. Uh, some of the times uh, we see like your name, right? Hi, hi, that's great. But we'd like to know where you're coming from. So if you could just, uh, just, just tell us where, which part of the world you're coming from, uh, it'd be great. So uh, we have quite a lot of stuff in store for you today and I'll be sharing some of my underwater video tips for especially for those of you who are new to underwater video shooting. This is going to be great for you. Um, so we're starting now and um, I'll just, I just want to put you in a mood, right? With a video that I'm going to play for you to see. So we're going to launch this video to kick off. We're going to launch this video to kick off the live in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> It's time to explore the ocean. Hey guys, all right, let's hope that put you in a mood. Now, uh, to, to begin, we will be sharing with you our schedule. So what we have here is a schedule, which is uh, what we have in store for you for the rest of the night. So we're going to start off to talk about the, the giveaway. Um, Orca Torch is uh, giving away a prize. And this is the D530V video light. I'll get to it soon. Um, now, the D530, how do you win it? How do you enter for the lucky draw? What you need to do is, well, just be yourself, be interactive, um, ask us questions, ask Orca Torch questions, you know, uh, get them busy, ask them tough questions. <laughs> ask them tough questions and, um, you know, get yourself noticed and Orca Torch, they will be getting us a list of 10 names and with the 10 names, we will put them down uh, into uh, a lucky draw where we will spin a wheel 
and you can see right in front of your eyes who's going to be the winner. Okay, after, the, after we've talked about the giveaway, right, we're going to, so if, when you look at the schedule, it's going from left to right. So after that, we're going to talk about the search for Atlantis. Now, this is a photo contest, and um, uh, Orca Tosh has had this competition before. They were winners, and now we want to, they want to continue the photo contest. So we're going to see, um, I'm going to show you how you're going to, you can get involved in a photo contest, how to enter your submissions. All right. After that, uh, looking down on the schedule, we're going to have a look at the D530V underwater video light. So I'm going to give some explanation here. We're going to have a look at it. Um, uh, okay, let's put me back onto the camera. This, this is very important because this is, uh, this is not new to our life, but uh, I'd like to share with you that uh, we're going to have very close up views of the torch whichever product or whichever item that we're going to be showing you right is going to be very close up so uh, if you want you can put down into the comments and let me know is there any angle or is there anything you would like to see close up because you know um, this is this is great because instead of you being able to you can't really touch the torch but now you can examine it from all the angles all right, so let us know in the comments if there's a certain angle you want to see. So after we've talked about the D530V, after that we're going to go into underwater video tips because I'm an underwater cameraman and a filmmaker. So I'm going to share some tips and this is going to be especially useful for newcomers who want to start, okay, you, you know, you want to start in, you want to start getting involved, you want to start shooting underwater videos. I'm sure my tips are going to help you a lot. And after that, it's going to be question and answers. Um, Orca Torch has two questions that are really important to them and they'd like to know uh, what you think. After the question and answers, we're going to go for the lucky draw. Now, the lucky draw is where we will pick one winner for tonight and you'll be bringing back the giveaway, which is the D530 TV underwater video light. Okay, now let's move on. Um, we are going to look at the giveaway. All right. Now, this giveaway is the torch that is actually being featured tonight itself. This is the Orca Torch D530V underwater video light. And this torch, this is going to be so great. Um, this is going to be so good because this torch has a wide beam. Okay. It has a wide beam. So, this is great for videos. And um, this is great for videos and because it's got very high lumens, all right? It's 1,200 lumens and it's got two lighting modes. It has two lighting modes, uh, which is like from 1,200 to 290 lumens, okay? Now, uh, lumens is a measurement of how bright a torch is how bright the light is okay and this torch the best thing about it is is chargeless is chargeless which means when you go for your travels right when you go for your travels you don't have to bring a charger along with you so no charger for those of you who, who are new with us uh, this is the first time you're joining us for a live you missed the first session fantastic you get to see how a torch looks like without having a charger and then now, one of the good things about the D530V is it comes with a snoot. What's a snoot, right? It's a, snoot is a light modifier. We'll get into that later. So, this is the item that is going to be given away tonight to one lucky draw winner. Yeah! Any comments, put them down and uh, we'll go through it. My producer here, she'll go through it and um, if there's anything, we'll address it. Okay, now, let's look at the next item on our list. This is the photo contest this is the search for atlantis that's the the team or the photo contest so do you know what to be shooting if you join this co photo contest do you know what you're going to be shooting of course it's going to be underwater right but do you, do you know what you're going to be shooting the team is the search for atlantis now atlantis is a mythical highly advanced city and, well, according to legend, the sea swallowed it up, right? So it's gone. Now we're going to search for it. 
Okay, so obviously it involves some underwater architecture, it involves some rack or cave, right? Okay, now it starts, it's actually it's already started, right? It's from March the 14th until June the 14th of 2020. So this year, wow, it's, this is submission time. So you've got any photos or you're out there and you, you feel like you want to get involved, this is the time because June 20th is, no, June 14th is the final day for submission. So you've got uh, prizes worth a thousand, okay, prizes worth $1,600 worth of prizes. Okay, so it's a good time for you to sign up for this uh, photo contest, for you to submit. This is the right time. Okay, now it's going to be rack, cave, Anything that has to do with architecture, underwater sculptures, all right? This is the team that Orca Torch is looking for. How, how do you get to know more about this contest, right? You go to Orca Torch website, uh, you'll, you'll find details on the contest there. Maybe Orca Torch, you're listening, maybe you can put the direct link because I noticed that the direct link is not that easy to find. I got to go to the Orca Torch store. So, uh, Orca Torch, you're listening. Uh, please get the link for everyone to see. Get the link into the comments so that uh, it's easier for them to, to, to refer to it and get into the contest because the contest will give you more guidelines for your submission. All right. Now, if there are any comments, please uh, let us know. I'm going to have a look at my producer's phone, right, um, to see uh, who has uh, uh, made any comments or... Um, let me check. Let me see if there's any... Ah, ice diving. Somebody has mentioned about ice diving. Wow. Okay, coming from Malaysia, right? Not even snow. So that's like a total... <laughs> okay, for those of you who are fortunate enough to be ice diving, I think in Orca Tosh Instagram, when we, when we look through it, right, um, there's hardly anything about ice diving. So you guys, if you're fortunate enough to be ice diving, get us your photos, let us feature you. Let us feature your photos on their Instagram, on their website, on their, um, you know, maybe on during the live, I can feature your photos as well. So if, if you're lucky enough to be ice diving, go ahead, show us. Okay, let's see. Okay, what... What? What's the difference between Lux and Lumens? How do I compare? Okay, with, uh, with our torches, we're looking at Lumens as to the measurement of how bright a light is. Later, when we explore the D530, uh, you'll be able to see how bright is 1,200 Lumens, right? So, we use that because it's not as clear as a millimeter or a centimeter, right? It's fixed. Um, a lot of things depends on the atmosphere around you. So maybe when we look at the D530, you will see how 1,200 lumens looks like. And then you can use that as your benchmark. All right. Um, okay, so Orca Torch has already put in the, uh, the link for the competition. So um, watch out for the comment down there. Okay, now let's look at... Wait, there's another comment. Let me just uh, look at this. I don't see that comment. Are you, are you able to change the angle of light while diving? Uh, it just came in. It just came in. Are you able to change the angle of light while diving? Or best to set and leave for the entire dive? Thank you for that question. Thank you. Um, I can't really see the name right here. Huh? <laughs> Clayton oh, Clayton Moran. Hey, thanks for uh, joining us, Clayton. I see your name in, uh, in, 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 in the events that we've sent out. Thanks for being uh, interactive. Uh, Clayton, are you, your question is, are you able to change the angle of light while diving or best to set? Um, I think it's important to be able to change the light's angle because oftentimes if the light is pointed directly at the subject, um, it's not ideal. Sometimes there are foliage, uh, sometimes corals or... Uh, some plants may be blocking the light, so we'll need to be able to adjust the light so that it hits the subject at the right angle. So, um, 
Personally, for me, I want my lights to be flexible, not just from one, one direction. It's got to be able to be moved to different directions. All right. So, um, oh, there's another question. Uh, okay, now we'll, we'll look at the features of the D530V. Right now, let's look at look. Let's look at the features of it. First of all, uh, this you've got to understand, right? This is a video light. Later on, I will explain to you what is the difference between a dive torch and a video light. Okay, so this is a video light, and what are the characteristics of a video light? It has a wide beam of a hundred and forty degrees. So wide. Okay. Next feature. It's got a high lumens of 1200, 1200 lumens. Okay, personally for me, 1200 is not bright enough. But this is actually a personal preference. It depends on where you're diving, how is the ambient light around you, how deep you're going. So to some people, 1200 lumens, whoa, I've, that's great, you know, I don't need anything brighter. For me, I prefer something that is brighter. But then again, do remember, a brighter torch usually means larger battery packs. It usually means the light is bigger and heavier. So there are drawbacks to it, pros and cons, you know. And uh, this, this uh, the Orca Torch D530V has two lighting modes. Uh, the brightest is 1200 lumens, and then we have up to, down to, down to 290 lumens. Okay, in case your buddy is nearby and you just want to signal him, you don't want to be blinding him, right? Yeah, this is great. We've got two different lighting modes. Um, chargerless, chargerless, we'll explore that afterwards. It basically, it means that you don't need to be carrying a charger for the battery of the torch. And it's got a snoot. Now, there are two D530V packages in Orca Torches product lineup. One comes with a snoot, the other one doesn't come to the snoot. Sorry, one comes with a snoot, the other one does not come with a snoot. Negligible price difference. So, uh, personally, I would get the one with a snoot. What in the world is a snoot? Okay, so let's find out what is a snoot. Now, let's go on to the, to the next item. Okay, a snoot is a light modifier. Okay, what is a light modifier. Now, this snoot converts a wide beam. You know the D530V has a wide beam. It will convert the beam to a narrower beam. This is great for folks who want to shoot macro. You love macro photography, macro videography. A snoot is good because it creates like a, it's like a highlight effect. Right? So the next point here is it creates a highlight effect where uh, the rest of the environment is dark, except your subject is highlighted, it's brighter. Okay. Do you like effects like this? Let us know in the comments. Uh, for me personally, I prefer everything to be bright because, oh man, underwater it's so hard to get bright areas. So the more light I have, the better. <laughs> okay, but that's just me. So um, <clears throat> Now this is not a simple snoot, right? This snoot has a built-in lens inside. And we'll explore this later when I show you the close-ups. Okay, and the snoot is really compact, it's really small, so really easy to, to bring around. Okay, let's look at the next item on our list. Now, um, you, you need to be aware, right? Or maybe if you're not aware, uh, I want to let you know. Now, this, this is... Um, this is something. Some re this is some research that I did on my own, uh, and I found out that there is actually another D five thirty V. Sorry, I found out that there is another D five thirty in the Orca Torch lineup. Right, one torch is called a D five thirty, the other one is called a D five thirty V. They look the same, they weigh the same, use the same batteries. Right, so exterior, externally. There is no difference, but internally, very big difference. So uh, you can see from my points over here, you've got a light beam difference. All right, you have one that is 140 degrees wide angle, and one is very narrow, which is only eight degrees. And the next uh, is 
the lumens, lumens, uh, one is marginally brighter than the other. Marginally, right? Small difference in terms of brightness. But actually, when you look at it in real life, there is a huge difference in terms of brightness. Uh, we'll come to that soon. Next, application. Uh, one is an underwater video light. Another is a dive torch. Both look the same, sound the same. Now, see, the thing here with the uh, Orca Torch product lineup, it can be daunting because when I first looked at their lineup, right, it's like, wow, look at all these numbers. And how do I tell one from the other? Well, let me help you a little bit. Any product from Orca Tosh that has V at the end normally means it's a video light. Normally, it means it's for photography or mostly videography. It's mostly for videography or photography. If it doesn't have a V behind it, it normally means it's probably for technical diving or um, just regular diving. Right? Okay, so this is a, it's a good guide for us when we look at lights. So, uh, this, is an, this is one of their torches. Now, you look at the orange band here. A lot of the Orca Torch video lights have this orange band, but it does not necessarily, it does not necessarily mean that it is a video light. Okay, case in point is their technical lights. They also have the orange band. So, I used to think, wow, anything that has an orange band, it is for video. No. Video, there's a V behind it, okay, which uh, Orca Torch didn't really tell us. So this comes down to what we've been browsing through and uh, this is the conclusion that I made. Okay, now let's look at the next item here. Okay, great, we've got videos to watch. This is a beautiful video. It is a video of a shipwreck by Mark, P sorry. This is a video by Mark Pilzer. Mark, if you are in the audience, please say hi. Please comment. We'd like to see you. Mark has shot this beautiful video, right? Um, let's have a look at the observation. Now, when we look at um, the scene here, the first thing we will notice is this looks like a lightsaber, you know, that there is like a straight beam of light stretching out from the torch, right? So this is a narrow beam, narrow, very narrow beam. Okay, video lights, very wide beam. So this is a very narrow beam. Secondly is dive lights are generally brighter than their video counterparts. They are generally brighter, generally, okay? May not be so in some cases, but normally dive lights are much brighter. Next, you can see, right, as Mark points to a part of the rack, as Mark points to the part, a part of a rack, right, you will notice that the center is really bright, super bright. And then the brightness quickly tapers off. Right? Only the center is bright. That is characteristics of a dive torch. Because right, a dive torch is for you to navigate under the, under the ocean. And the next thing you can see is there, a dive torch has a very long throw. What is a throw? A throw is how far the light can travel. This light has a very long throw. That means this light is so powerful, it can travel really far. Okay, so these are characteristics of a dive torch. So you've seen all these uh, points over here, and these are the observations that we've made, and its application, it's great for dive torch because underwater video light, a dive torch is not suitable. Let me rephrase that again. To shoot good looking videos and photos, we cannot be using a dive torch, mainly because of the hotspot. That's just one of the reasons. Now let's have a look at Mark's, uh, uh, Mark's video. Let's have a look at Mark's videos. I want you to have a look at, um, at of the, uh, I want you to have a look at the video. And there's something really strange here, you know. Now this is a rack, right? Now, let's have a look at the video. Let's see him explore this rack. Okay, at the start of the video, once it finishes the loop, at the start of the video, I want you to see this really cool thing. Just be immersed with Mark's video. Look at it, look at it, all right. Okay, now, you look at the floor of this rack. Past the propeller, now he's going into the mess hall. Mess hall or kitchen, I can't really tell. All right, now he's going, he's gonna go in. I'd like you to see, right? Very ghostly, very haunting. And there are rats on the floor. Wait a minute! That's not a rat. Those are fishes. 
So you can see how otherworldly this video is. It's so beautiful, Mark. Thanks for sharing this with us. So whatever you see here, those are not rodents. They are not rats, right? They're all fishes. There, fish. <laughs> okay, now let's have a look at the next video. And this is the dive torch. This is the D530V, the torch that we're going to be featuring tonight. Now, can you notice there's a really huge difference between the two? Firstly, it has a really wide beam, right? You don't see that narrow lightsaber characteristic of this light. It's a very wide beam. Secondly, it might be a little bit... Okay, we know that on paper, it's marginal. The, the difference in terms of brightness is marginal, right? And then, uh, next, we can see that there is consistent brightness. There is no hot spot. There is no one part that is really bright and the rest is dark. Everywhere seems to be bright. Okay, and then the next thing we can see from the video, right, is there is a very short throw. Okay, just hang on. Hang on, look at the video. Hang on. Let's have a look. There's a very short throw because as he goes into the as he goes into the rack, you can see that the light doesn't travel very far. Okay, it's going to go into a loop. All right, now look, in, look at the distance, right? This, this light is not traveling very far. So it's got a very short throw. This video is by Kevin. Kevin, is by Kevin. I can't pronounce your name. Sorry. <laughs> okay, this video by Kevin shows off very clearly how beautiful this light is and how, how is the, there's a big difference between the two lights. Uh, this one has a very short throw because whatever you see in a distance, right, is not lit up as much as what the other light can do. And uh, so what is best to use this torch for? Underwater videos because you get very consistent brightness. It brightens up everything, right? And there is no hot spot. There is no one particular uh, area that is bright. So there you have it. You've got two very different lights as in application-wise, they are very different, right? But they look exactly the same. Yeah? Any questions? Drop them in the comments. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Baron, and we're talking about uh, underwater video lights, especially today we're going to feature the D530V. So if you're new, uh, just shout out to us. Okay, now let's look at user picks. Let's look at user picks. We have uh, user picks coming in from Ferran Sanchez. I remember him because uh, uh, because I know he's an Ultra Torch ambassador and uh, I've seen his work. So Ferran Sanchez is from Barcelona, Spain, and we have Rafael, Rafa, Rafaele, Rafaele, right? <laughs> okay. Now uh, both of these gentlemen here, uh, you, as you can. You can see from their pictures, right? The subject is very nicely lit up while the background is almost solid black. So by, by, giving, it, by giving their images this kind of effect, you're actually making your subjects pop. Your subjects are actually jumping out at you. And this is a very nice technique to be using in your underwater photography, right? So do you like things like this? If you like this kind of effect, this is done by, with the help of a snoot. Effects like this are created with the help of a snoot. Yeah, so this is, uh, you, can, you can see from here what a snoot actually helps you with, right? Okay, um, back to comments. Let's see if there's any comments before we, we move on because um, we're going to have a look at your comments because after this, we're actually going to be diving into the D530V. We're going to do a bit of unboxing. So are there any comments that uh, we, can, we can talk about? Anybody saying hi? D530 Dive Torch is a great beam. All right, very cool. What rack is this? So, uh, sorry, I can't really read the, your name. Uh, someone is asking, what rack is this? So, if you're here with us, I'm, I think you're referring to Mark's, Mark's video, right? 
Yeah, Mark, maybe you want to share with us what rack this is? Ah, somebody says, that's awesome. I get the difference between the two. That is great. Wait, let me see. Who, who said that? Who said, that's great. Uh, I see the difference. Be that's awesome. I see. Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, that is, that's, that's great. That's great because, Andrew, you know, I, I had to go through. When I first started, right, I, I really didn't know what is, which is what. You know, when I first started, a torch is a torch, right? It's like, it, as long as it provides light, as long as, long as it brightens up the, the ocean floor, I'm fine. Just get it to me, right? Only later when, when my videos came out, it's like, oh my goodness, what is this? What have I shot? Oh no. Then I realized that, oh, okay, there is a really big difference. So I'm, get, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, now, now the knowledge has been tr uh, transferred to you. That's great. Okay, all right, so let's, uh, I think there's one question that maybe Orca Torch can answer because this is very product specific and uh, what is the hotspot spill beam ratio for the D530? Okay, that one Orca Torch has to answer. Would the snoot be used for video or more? Okay, would the snoot be used for video? Who is this? Clayton. Clayton, Clayton, Clayton Moran, right? Okay, Clayton has asked a question, would the snoot be used for video or more for photography? Uh, I have not seen as many videographers use it. Uh, mostly photographers find it really nice to use. So mm, it can be used for both because this discipline are transferable. So you can use it for both actually. It is it's a style that it's this snoot, right? It's a, it's, it's, whether you prefer to shoot this kind of photos or not. So whether it's photo or video, yes, you can use it for both. Um, it's whether you like this kind of style of photography because it takes a lot of skill. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Ferran Sanchez and Rafael will attest to that because um, later you will see the beam is so tiny, which means they're actually capturing, they're actually filming uh, creatures which are really, really, really tiny and they've got to be really good. At, at their buoyancy and their trim. Okay. I do video for a filming. Uh, I do video for a living and this made my underwater filming a breeze. That's great to hear. Who is that? Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for that. Light temperature. Someone has asked about light temperature. Okay, uh, later we will find out. It's all in the box. So um, I think uh, let's go into the uh, close-up view. We're going to look at the D530V in detail right now. <clears throat> Ta-da! So this is the D530V. Let me give you some light. All right. So this is the D530V. Okay. Um, I have to tell the truth. I want to be honest here. It has already been opened because I needed to test it out before I showed it to you guys. So this is not really an unboxing. It's not a strict unboxing, right? It's already been unboxed and put together again to show like it's a new box. <laughs> okay, um, so this is a D530V. You've got the specs over here. Okay, it's got a runtime of four hours and 36 minutes. Okay, now let's actually look at it. Let me check. Okay, let's have a look at it. So for those of you who are getting this light for the first time, just be aware that uh, things tend to drop out, right? Okay, so I'm just going to open it up this way. And then we're going to see what are the goodies that comes with it. Now we've got the, <coughs> we've got a ball, ball mounting bracket. This is to attach your torch onto your camera, uh, your camera housing, your camera rig, all right. And then you've got um, okay. So this is your lanyard. Additional O-rings. This is always good to have. You've got your. This is a, a branding, a rubber branding brand, right? Brand as in uh, Orca torch. You know, from a distance, you can see, oh, it's orange, it's Orca Torch, yay. Okay, next you have, yeah, this is the USB cable to charge your torch. So I'm just going to take this out. Now, 
this is your snoot. This is the package that comes with the snoot, right? So, uh, like I said, the price difference between the snoot and the snootless version is very negligible. So, you might just want to be getting the one with the snoot. Okay, and we have, now this is fantastic because this is, well, it looks like a regular 18650 it looks like a regular 18650 battery, right? This is uh, rated at 3400 milliampere, milliamp hour, 3400 milliamp hour. But what's fantastic about this battery, right? Even though it looks very similar to a regular 18650 battery is, you've got a USB charging port over here. This is a USB charging port. Which means, right, when you look at the package that comes with the D530V, there is no charger. So, no charger means chargerless, right? So, this is the battery and your charger at the same time. So, to charge the battery, uh, everyone knows how to do this, but uh, I'll just show it anyway. So, I'm just going to put on my power bank. I'm going to boot up my power bank and okay, it's the other way around. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the battery comes with a indicator. There is a charging indicator. Right now, it's red. Maybe you can't see the red because the lights are too bright. I'm just going to darken it a bit. Okay, so can you see the red here? Okay, so this means it's charging, right? So, this is how you charge the D530V. And this is how you charge the D530. Great. Okay, I'm going to remove this. And now, let's have a look at the star of the show, which is the D530. Let's bring this bad boy out. Excuse me, guys. I'm just going to dump everything to the floor to give more space for these guys over here. Okay, so this is a D530V. And now I'm going to break open the top. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not break open it actually. I'm just going to open it. The opening is not at the tail cap. The opening is towards the middle, just behind the switch. I'm going to turn on my light here so that you can see clearly. Okay, so this is the D530V. So this is a, it's a push button torch. For those of you who like push button, me, this is a push button torch, very easy to operate, right? Okay, so I'm going to twist it to open it up. Okay, my producer is going to check for comments. So if you go, if you got comments right now, uh, is there anything you'd like to see, right? Please let us know. We'll try to make this as interactive as possible so that you can explore the product in detail. You can see the one LED that is here. And this is a really super bright LED. Okay, so this is how the LED looks like. There's only one LED there. Imagine if there's four of this. Okay, I'm just going to turn on my light again. Alrighty. So, double, is it triple seal? Looks like a triple seal, o, uh, looks like triple seal O-rings. Okay, and this is how the circuitry inside looks like. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the battery in. So put that down and put this in. How long is the charging time? Orca torch, how long is the charging time? Just repeat that again. Orca torch, how long is the charging time? I don't have that info right now. Oh man, who asked that? What's his name? Who, uh, backup batteries, right? Okay, remind me about the backup batteries. Yes, yes, the, question, the answer is yes, you can buy backup batteries, but, but there's something I really want to share with you when it comes to backup batteries. All right, remind, remind me. Before we end this, remind me about that. Just say, hey Baron, you said you want to tell us about backup batteries. Okay, just remind me. Now, okay, so, well, 
it's uh, w w the battery is in, so I'm going to switch it on. So, so it's just a uh, right, it's on. So now, if I tell you this is 1,200 lumens, it's very you you might not. It's very hard for you to imagine that this is 1,200 lumens, right? This could be this could be like a gazillion lumens. So you need to be you need to be here. You need to be um, actually with the torch to be, able, to be able to find out because there's so many other things. There's a lot of factors involved that affect the brightness of a torch. It could be my, my, uh, it could be my camera setting that uh, may make the torch look brighter, right? So to me, 1,200 lumens is a starting point. On land, on land 1,200 lumens is too bright. But in the water, 1,200 lumens is, well, just right. Okay, for me, it's not bright enough. But do remember that this torch is so light and so small. Okay, brighter torches would mean heavier and bigger. So this is a video light. Now, let's have a look at another torch. Let's have a look at, this is the D570. And then let's look at another one. This is a, this is a D700. <coughs> D700. So if you can see, it doesn't have a V at the end. So this is a dive torch. Okay, let's have a look. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, snoot. All right, now. Let's compare the light beams. Can you see the difference in the light beam? Dive torch, dive torch, video light. Just gonna turn them off. This is a this is a rotary switch, which means you actually have to turn, you turn the torch. See, you have to turn the torch to switch it on. Yeah, and this, the D five thirty V is a push button torch. So I push, I go to the second mode of brightness and push, 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 okay? Any comments coming in? Anything we, we can help them with? <coughs> okay, hang on, right? I, uh, stuff are too far away <laughs> for me to read, so let me just run over there and can you show the D9 the 290 lumen setting as well, plus with ah yes 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 okay 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 so let's go back to the close up uh, because we haven't finished with the snoot yet actually this part we're not done yet I just wanted to see how the comments are so good 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 let's talk about the snoot okay so uh, you see over here right this this table here I I purposely choose a dark table so at least you can get to see the light's brightness so this is uh. This is 1,000, 1,200 lumens, right? About 1,200 lumens. And then I'm going to do mode 2. I'm going to do mode 2 now, which is uh, 290. So this is 290. Now I'm going to show, um, I'm going to point it down. And point it down, right? And then uh, let's turn it off. And I'm going to turn it on at 1,000 lumens, 1,002. 2002, 2003, right? And then I'm going to go to mode 2. Okay, so it's actually a friendlier, but whoa, still really bright, right? It's still a friendlier illumination, but still very bright. Turn it off. Okay, turn it on again. Uh, it's not going to blind you because it's through computer screens. So, okay, really bright. Not so bright. Off. 
Now let's have a look at snoot. So the snoot actually has a lens inside. So we're not talking about just some simple snoot. This is a snoot with its own lens. So this means the light is probably being magnified as it travels through the snoot. So you're not losing light. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to put the snoot on. Okay, so uh, typically the distance between subject and light would be about, at the most, I think would be about this much distance. So that would be about one feet from light to subject. Okay, so I've not used a snoot before. None of my videos or photos have featured a snoot before. People like uh, Ferran Sanchez, uh, so he's used a snoot. So you tell me if you would want to use something like this because the photos that come out, they're fabulous. So maybe I want to look into using a snoot like this. I've used snoot before on land, but not underwater. And okay, keep in mind, right? Keep in mind that we're looking at this setup on land. So in the water, the effect would be slightly different, right? Okay. So this is how the snoot looks like. I'm going to remove the snoot now. The torch is really heating up because this is meant to be operated underwater. Okay, can you see how white the light is? And when the snoot is on, Okay, scuba divers, scuba shooters, guys and girls, how was that? Um, any comments? Yes, I see my producer nodding her head. Yes, there are comments. Okay, let's see. Can you tell more about how important are CRI and color temperature in underwater photography? Okay, now, here's the thing, right, with CRI. CRI is how accurate a light reproduces a subject's color. Okay, so if a light is designed well and the subject is blue with red stripes and a scatter of yellow, when the light with a high CRI film uh, is switched on, you will see that subject exactly how it is. But a light with a lower CRI, the colors will be a little bit different. Okay, so is CRI important? On land, it is super important because people's faces, skin tones are represented accurately. That is so important. In the ocean, when most divers are covered with masks and um, fishes come, marine life come in all forms of colors. Uh, the thing is, with Orca Torch, Lights, they are all high CRI, so that's good to know. And of course, if you ask me whether it's on land or in the water, a high CRI light is always very valued. So yes, it's important to me. Okay, so anything, I uh, would love this one. Night dive. Yeah, so the thing about this, right, uh, the, the D530V, uh, would be great for videos, right? But uh, for, a, for a dive torch, I'm not sure. If you put this snoot on, it narrows the beam. Can this be a dive torch? <laughs> what do you think? You know, let us know. What do you think? Uh, who else asking? The awesomeness is, the, what? Awesomeness is so high. <laughs> who said that? Who said that? Azali. Hey, Az Azaline, right? Azali, Azali. Azali, hi, nice to see you again. How are you? <laughs> okay, okay, Azali, very funny one. <laughs> okay, so uh, are there any comments? Uh, anything else you guys would like to see uh, about a torch? 
or anything you like to compare. I have here three of this, right, which is a uh, D700, D530 with snoot, and uh, D570. Yeah, uh, sometimes, you know, the, f the numbers, oh, <laughs> but after a while, you kind of get used to them. So, um, when we're talking about backup battery, let's return to, right, remember I said I want to talk to you about backup batteries, so let's go back to the close-up. Okay, now, these are two different torches. This is a video light. This is a dive torch. Okay, now, when I... When I got the when I got the D570, when I got this torch, I love it so much. Whenever I dive, whether it's to shoot or not to shoot, I always bring this along. I don't care how bright my video lights are, really, I don't care. Even though it's 10,500 lumens, I don't care. This guy is always with me because it's light and very easy to point, you know? And also you get a freaking awesome laser. Right? Okay. Now, one thing about the D570, right? You need to bring your charger along. So that's not so convenient, correct? You need to bring your charger along. And someone commented on one of my YouTube videos, well, I've got charger for my dive computer, I've got charger for my phone, I've got charger. There was a long list. Lah. So the thing is, what he's trying to say is, hey, what if I don't want a charger? I, I, can, can life be made simpler? So you see, the D570 and this one, the D700, they share the same battery. No, this is a D530. They share the same battery. So which means, if I remove this battery from the D700, which is actually using a rechargeable, a USB rechargeable battery, right? And this is the D570. Okay, so it uses the same battery, so which means I can actually remove this battery which is not, it is a rechargeable battery but it is not a USB charging battery, okay? So I hope I, I, hope I didn't confuse you, you see. Okay, take a look at the, I think you know what I mean, right? Yeah, there's a USB hole here, USB port. The other one doesn't, this, this is just a regular rechargeable 18650 battery. This one can be charged via USB, right? So I'm going to put this into my... So what I'm trying to say, right, is whichever of Orca Torch products that uses 18650 battery, you can get the USB version, the USB version battery, and then you can use it. So which means, right, I don't need to be bringing my charger along. Awesome. I think maybe in the future, Orca Torch will be switching all their batteries to the USB version. Okay, so that was the show and tell. Okay, guys, so that was the, that was the show and tell. Uh, are there any comments that I need to be aware of? Ah, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Sweeters. I know Daniel is really busy. He's preparing himself mentally. So thanks for joining us. I think he's on another time zone. So sleep is really important to him, but he's joining us here. Daniel, all the best tomorrow. So you want to get the suit? Uh, can... Okay, I don't have a D... Do I have a D5? I don't have, right? No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the regular D530, you mean, this is a D530V, yeah, yeah, because the D, the D530V and the D530 is same body, it's the same body, right, so it should be able to fit the snoot in. Orca Torch, we need confirmation from you, can, Daniel's question is, can the snoot be used with the D530? Can the snoot be used with a D530 dive torch? Yeah, so that was answered. 
No, okay. So, Oracle Torch, we'd like to know, Daniel's question is, can the D530 be using the snoot? I'm sure it fits, Dan Daniel. I'm sure it fits, but... Uh, yeah, it's already a narrow beam, so you're going to narrow it down further. Yeah, I'm sure it fits, but we need to wait for their confirmation. I had a 550, but the sleeve on that soft Goodman handle was too big. And I lost it to the <laughs> <laughs> Cannot. Okay, Daniel Orca Torch say cannot cannot be used with a D five thirty. Sorry. I had somebody lost his torch. Who's that? Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith lost a five fifty to the ocean. <laughs> I lost a I lost the lens to the ocean. Can you believe it? So dumb of me, right? Oh, okay. I don't want to talk about sad things today. Okay, <laughs> next. What? Uh, any comments we can address? Okay, so let's move on to the underwater video tips. Producer is chasing me. Is it? <laughs> they want to see the lucky draw. <laughs> okay, underwater video tips, right? Okay, here. So this is the outline that I'm going to share. I'm going to talk about underwater shooting tips. I'm going to talk about your camera and I'm going to talk a little bit about video editing. Okay, so these are all going to be in brief, but I hope you find it valuable for your knowledge. Okay, the first thing, shooting tips. Now, when we film video or photo underwater, you need to get as close to the subject as possible. If you can get close to the subject, right, get even closer. That is why we use the widest lens. You get what I mean? Okay, let's cut to me. So we use the widest lens for underwater videos because Okay, I, I think I think divers I think we, you're all divers. Can you tell me why you need to be getting as close as possible to the subject? It's because, okay, I'll leave it there first. We move on to the next, okay. You need to use underwater video lights, okay. Now, uh, some of you might be asking, but what if I have red filters? What if I have this awesome camera that can, uh, uh, that has very high ISO setting? Well, it also depends on how deep you go because the deeper you go, right, your red filter is not going to help you anymore because if anything, your red filter is going to absorb light because there's a filter in front of your lens so it's going to absorb light it's going to make things even darker so we want to be using underwater video lights maybe at shallower depths it's okay but as we go deeper past the 10 meter mark we need to be using video lights right and um, okay you need to manage your, your buoyancy now this one people like Daniel will be able to tell you that Buoyancy is like super important, even if you're not doing photography or videography, buoyancy is super important because you need to keep off the corals. You need to be able to hover at a certain uh, level, right? You need to be very level because you need to be really, really stable, right? You need to be really stable. So you need to keep it stable. To be able to keep it stable, with your camera rig, you, to be able to keep it stable, you need to have good buoyancy, right? So that's the next point, which is keep things very stable. Now, what, uh, what differentiates between a professional looking video and a not so professional video is that whether the video is shaky or not, right? So if the video is shaky, the first thing that comes to mind, okay, amateurish. Right, so we need to be keeping everything as steady as possible. Right, and then, uh, now this thing, dive instructors, um, dive instructors, you need to teach this because when I first started diving, I wasn't told about the reverse fro frog kick until I passed my advance. When I took the advance, I wasn't even taught that. So we were all, when we first took our open water, how did we navigate the ocean? <laughs> a lot of us use our hands, right? We thought we were still swimming, right? We didn't really depend so much on our legs. 
as we progressed through our course, we realized that all you need were your legs and your fins. Am I right? So with just your legs and your fins, you are able to get where you want to go. And I guess it's, it kind of stopped there because uh, uh, I, I didn't really know how to do the reverse frog kick. And the reverse frog kick right, is like super important. And my dive instructor, Ivan, if you're here, do sound off. He taught me how to do the reverse frog kick. And as a videographer, I guess to any diver, not just videographers, the reverse frog kick is so important because without that, we've all been taught how to move forwards. How to go forwards. Okay, so you know, you know, you want to get there? Go. You want to get there? Go. But how do you stop? You can't be doing this to stop, right? You can't be doing this to stop because you've got a camera rig and with a camera rig you don't really you can't really use your hands. So the reverse frog kick, when you when you do your frog kick, you will end with a clap, right? Your legs are at your feet are at neutral and you do a clap to propel yourself forward, right? But with the reverse frog kick, you start with a clap and you do this. And then you start with a clap, you're already in a clap position and you reverse and have your feet at neutral. Right, your dive instructors, I think they are much better at telling this than I am. Um, it's so important because to be able to stop and to be able to adjust your distance. Okay, I'm too close to the subject now. Although I did say to get close, right? But you know, sometimes you're too close, right? You, you need to move away for various reasons. Maybe it's an urchin. Maybe it's something that uh, might be not so good to your diving, like a jellyfish. You, you want to be able to move away. How do most of us move away? If you don't know the frog kick, we tend to swim this way, right? But what if you know the reverse frog kick, you're able to adjust your distance. So to me, I feel out of all this, right, whether you're getting close, you're getting the widest lens, best looking camera or what, learn the reverse frog kick from your instructor. Get him or her to teach that to you, master it. I think it will help you a lot. And then, um, yeah, so the last thing is touch nothing and take only videos, right? Every dive instructor there will tell you don't touch anything. So which means it's a chain reaction, right? Don't touch anything. So buoyancy has to be good, right? So get close to your subject. When you're getting close, you need to know how to stop. So reverse frog kick, right? Use underwater video lights. Use the widest lens. Okay, you might be thinking, right? My lens on land is so wide. Oh, awesome, so wide. But once you get into the water, everything starts getting very close to you, okay? Because of the refraction. So if you think your lens is wide, make it wider. Because once you get underwater, everything will be closer to you. Okay, now let's look at the next item. Let's talk about your camera. If there's any comments, right, uh, do let me know. Uh, in terms of camera, this is a very personal preference. Okay, so I'm not going to mention that I like this camera or I prefer that camera because camera is something that is very personal. And uh, what I want to tell you is when you choose a camera, you've got to make sure you consider all of these items, which are your resolution. Today, you want to shoot in HD, but maybe a few months, when you're getting good at your hobby or you want to be shooting 4K. So does your camera allow that flexibility or do you have to get a new camera? When you upgrade yourself, do you have to upgrade the camera? Right? So HD and 4K. Nowadays, most cameras allow you to shoot HD. Actually, all cameras let you shoot HD, whether they allow you to shoot 4K or not. So consider that. Next is, you need to get a suitable housing. Housings don't have to cost an arm and a leg, right? They can be cheaper, but cheaper comes with limitations. Maybe you can't go that deep, but when you first start, are you going to go past 40 meters? Most likely not. So consider your housing, okay? Get it from a reliable brand so that it doesn't flood. A lot of uh, brands, they make good housing, but make sure you know how to wrap up your camera into the housing so that it doesn't flood, right? Okay, next, size matters. So a camera that is this big, by the time you put a housing onto it, by the time you attach your underwater lights, by the time you attach all your arms, it becomes this big, right? So is getting a smaller camera better? Smaller cameras usually have less features. Some of it includes the next item, which is 
Does a small camera allow you to have full manual controls? Yes, it does. So you got to choose the right camera. Okay, small doesn't mean not good. Big, big means it's going to get even bigger by the time you get into the ocean with all your housing and lights. Right? Okay, next item. Can your camera, rather this is more on the housing, can the housing you purchase let you attach a wet lens on it? A wet lens meaning you, if, your cameras, uh, if your camera's coverage is not so wide, you get an option to get a lens that can attach to your camera's housing and make the view even wider. Can your housing allow you to attach a lens? So that's another thing you need to consider. Now, next, tactile buttons. But because when you're in the ocean, right, there is no time to, okay, let me see. I, I need to touch this. I need, no, it's all about when you're in the ocean shooting, right, it's all about, okay, now white balance is this. Okay, I think I got white balance. Hey, there's a shark over there. Oh, right. Okay, I need to set my shutter speed. Okay, shutter speed is done. Aperture. Oh, turtle, turtle, turtle. You know, so tactile buttons. Your housing should have buttons that are touchy enough so that you know where things are without actually having to look at it. Okay, so um, I've covered some of the tips here. If you've got comments, let me know because I know I'm kind of rushing through this. Uh, so if you've got comments, um, maybe I can slow things down a little bit. Okay, now let's go. Any questions? You need to shoot with flash. Okay, now if you, if you, uh, who's this? this? Monica, Franco. Monica? Monica, I see your question here. Do, wait, wait, hold on. There's a, Ooh, so fun to, that sounds like Daniel. Ooh, ooh, so fun to teach. <laughs> now get, uh, okay, <laughs> Daniel, right? Reverse frog kick. Okay, Monica, uh, your question is, do you need to shoot with flash or is with the snoot only okay? Uh, that really depends, uh, Monica, on the settings of your camera. So, and also how deep you are. If you're not so deep, you still have enough lights, right? So, Maybe with you, you balance it out with your camera settings, maybe you don't need flash. So this one really depends on like, is there enough ambient light from the top? How deep you are? How is your camera settings, right? So all this combine to, only then will you know whether you need a strobe or not. Now, uh, people like Raffaele and uh, Ferran Sanchez, if you look at their rigs, right? Um, they use the snoot sometimes is just as a backup. They actually have their flash there, their strobes, right? And the snoot is the snoot is as a backup, right? But uh, uh, okay, based on experience, if you have a snoot, normally you don't use flash, because the snoot lets you capture, uh, lets you isolate a part of the subject. The snoot. Slide is isolating this subject so that everything else looks really dark, but the subject is really bright. So normally, we don't use a strobe together. I mean, we don't use a flash together with a snoot. Okay, but like I said, this is not a definite answer because it really depends on the depth, visibility of the water, uh, ambient light. Okay, Monica, I hope that helps. <laughs> okay, okay, Daniel's reverse frog kick. Okay, so, okay, next. So let's talk about video editing. Now, you've got video editing, right? You've got desktop programs and you've got mobile apps. So what do I mean by desktop programs? Meaning you actually have to have a computer. Now, a lot of us will shoot, 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 shoot. But what do we do with the footage? Do we actually get to edit it and share it out? Even though if you're not the kind of person who like to sh to, to maybe, maybe you're a little bit low-key, you don't want to be sharing it to anybody. I've seen students who are like that. They don't like to be sharing it with everybody. But, you know, um, what if for yourself, you will want to create a video montage of all the trips that you've been in. So you need to know how to do video editing. And video editing, uh, you've got desktop programs. This needs a actual computer, uh, heavy. And you've got mobile apps, which means using your phone. So there are apps using your phone to edit and also you can, when you do video editing, you select the best parts. You've got a 10 second long video, take 3 seconds out of it. 
right? This is the best shots. We're talking about video, yeah? We're talking about video here. You've got a one minute video of this turtle, right? Shorten it, find the best part, maybe take about 10 seconds. What? I shot one minute of the turtle and you want me to... Whale shark! I've been searching it for years. You know, I've got 10 minutes of a whale shark. You're asking me to take 10 seconds? Yes, take the best part. Turn it into a short, sweet video, right? Okay, so you need to keep it short and interesting and add music tracks to enhance the feel of your video, right? Okay, uh, we also have video titles. Video titles uh, will help you to tell people, tell your viewers where you shot this, what was the mood you're in, what kind of fish, what kind of marine life this is. So learn to use video titles. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Um, okay, if you look at the, before that, before we go on to the next slide, if you look at the screen, right, you can see that I have some of my favorite video editing programs. I won't be dragging uh, this too long. If you've got questions, you can rewind back the video later so that you can see what kind of video editing programs you prefer. I will be around, you know, you can see my social media handles and questions about choosing the right editing program for you. There is no perfect video editing program. Okay, there is one that suits you the best. So if you need to ask me questions, uh, later you can shoot me a message. Do we have any questions? And who's that? Clayton. Clayton. Uh, Clayton asks, which is the best software you've used for underwater color correction? Okay, um, so Clayton, you're asking me personally, right? Personally, because there are lots of opinions out there, but since you ask me personally, I prefer to use Final Cut Pro 10. Final Cut Pro 10 is only available for Macs, so quite sad, um, it's only for Macs. If you have a Mac, it's great. If not, you can try, uh, what I'm using right now is uh, Cyberlink Power Director. So you can try that, it's a mobile app. So you can put it on your phone and you know, once you're out of the ocean on the boat going back, you can already start editing it. The color correction is all right. Of course, it cannot compare to the desktop computers, right? But yes, it gets the job done. Um, it's all right. So if I have no Final Cut Pro 10 with me and I only have my phone, I would use PowerDirector. Okay, so uh, let's go on to our Q&A session. Okay, now, uh, so I see a lot of you have asked questions, so you've made, you've given us a hard time to find the 10 names, right? Because everyone's been asking questions, great. So we're gonna have the 10 names for the lucky draw later, thank you so much. and. Now, the first thing Orca Torch, and actually I too would like to know about this. Can you sound off when will the lockdown in your country end? Um, I still don't know uh, where you're from. Some of you, I, I still don't know where you're from. But uh, if you can, write down where you're from. Hey, I'm from Australia and the lockdown, you know. I'm from Malaysia and our lockdown, for example, right? I'm from Malaysia and our lockdown has kind of ended, not really, it's, um, it's, what is it called, enhanced, is it? It's an enhanced restriction movement order thingy. So uh, what hap what, what's happening here is we can go out, we just need to have social distancing, uh, we cannot travel interstate, right? So that is the, that's the, that's the big thing. Previously, we, we, we could only travel one person at a time to get groceries and necessary items, now we can grow. We can go as a couple. Can we go as a group? Still can't go as a group, right? Um, so, big thing is, we cannot, we cannot uh, travel outstage, uh, interstate. So we've got a huge celebration coming up. It's called uh, Hari Raya. So uh, it's going to be tough for our friends because uh, a lot of them. This, this is a, a, a tradition where everybody goes back to where they were from, their hometown. And because of this restriction, everyone has to stay where they are. So how about you? How, how, how are you guys coping? Uh, let us know how, how is the situation back home, right? Okay, next question. Next question, right? Uh, I don't know whether you guys use this. Uh, again, if you're a dive instructor, you most likely have something like this. Uh, this is called a dive beacon. 
a dive beacon. Orca Torch is creating new dive beacons. And they want to know, do you prefer constant or flashing mode? Sorry, I think I rephrased that. Do you prefer a constant light or do you want the light to be flashing? Okay, so what are dive beacons? You are already looking at it on screen. Orca Torch has two dive beacons over here. Uh, they've got a smaller one and a larger one. The larger one takes double uh, A batteries. Okay, a dive beacon for if you're new. A dive beacon. If if anybody like like uh, Daniel, uh, if 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 you can uh, tell the rest what dive beacons are, uh, they are actually for you to let yourself be known. As in, you have a beacon at your tank or somewhere visible, right? Uh, at a distance, other divers can spot spot. Other divers can spot where you are, and uh, you, you won't get lost from your group so easily. I think this is actually very, very useful because when I first started diving, uh, because I shoot a lot of videos, right? The videographer tend to be left behind, right? The entire group will, oh, look at that, 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 look at that. And the videographer is still there filming that one nudie branch that the rest have seen like 10 minutes ago. And when he looks up, where the heck is everybody? <laughs> oh no, right? And you're a newbie and you don't know what to do and you start to like, oh goodness. So what did the dive briefing say? What did they say? Okay, the reef is on my left, you know what? Right? So with dive beacons, right, it makes it easier for your dive guide, your dive master, your dive instructor to be able to locate you quickly. Okay, of course, if you've got a torch, it helps, but you've got to be doing this. With a dive beacon, it's just hanging off your tank or hanging off your vest. And But here's the thing, do you prefer it to be strobing, flashing, or would you prefer a light that is constantly switched on? Okay, sound off in the uh, comments below. Somebody said, holy moly, the beacon is great. Okay, Orca Torch, you heard that, so... Uh, yeah, that's the thing with the beacons, right? I've never seen it, you know. It's, so I, I don't know where they kept it in the, in, the, in the product list. Maybe I wasn't looking for it, but... Uh, but they did, they did say that it's new, so look out for it. Uh, solid isn't flashing used to say you... Ah, who said that? Clayton. Clayton. Solid isn't flashing used to say you need help, okay? So the flashing could mean that like SOS, right? So a solid would be nice, right? Solid as in a constant like lights on, right? Okay, that, that is a really good uh, uh, thought there. Thanks, Clayton. And Barcelona, Spain, we can walk outside. Oh my goodness, Barcelona, Spain, you can walk. Who is that? Uh, Monica. Monica, you can walk outside one kilometer around home only. One hour, oh! Did you see her comments? I think I'm being a bit outdated here. I didn't see that in the news. I thought we had it bad here, you know. At least we could travel uh, a, ra uh, a radius of 10 kilometers from where we are and we're not limited to the time as long as it's within... I mean the cops, they, they check our license, you know, okay, this is where you're from, what are you doing so far from home? They do that, but as long as we maintain... 10 kilometers is pretty far, but Monica says it's only one kilometer and one hour a day. Okay, how do they keep track of your one hour a day? Do you like uh, have a car or something? But man, uh, that is tough, Monica. I don't know how you... <laughs> Check out her comments below. Okay, so um, I have a flashing tank light. Who said that? Brian. Brian. Brian, I have a flashing tank light. Okay, that's, that's good. It's a tank light. They hang it on your tank. And somebody is asking about the cost of the beacon. So Orca Torch, if you have estimation on the... Or oh, is it actually out yet? I'm still not sure about that. Better to have s several flashing... Ah, oh. yes, Orca Torch. Who said that? Azali. Azali. So, Azali uh, is asking if we could fit in multiple modes for the beacon. I agree with Azali, right? Sometimes we want it to just be on all the time. Sometimes we want it to be strobes and flash. So if you can have a switch there, Orca Torch, do you think that's possible? Yeah, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe you have a basic one that is just constant on and an option. Uh, this one, 
just flashing only. Uh, we have a premium model, which is multiple modes. Right? Flashing lights are also used for positioning. Think about planes and helis. Yes, aviation, right? That's important. We cannot have uh, signaling, light signaling and uh, uh, interrupting air traffic, right? Uh, this has been... Who is it? Early start? Who is that? Okay, Andrew, uh, thanks for joining us. I will see you in the next live, hopefully. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe. Who is that? Uh, two mode. Quick blinking and SOS in case you really need it. Okay. What will the lumens of the beacon light be? Wow, that is tough because beacon lights are generally not that bright. So I'm guessing, I don't know, 500 lumens or less? Okay, so Orca Torch is in a better position to answer this. Now, um, I think a number of folks are, are waiting for the giveaway. So let's proceed to the giveaway. Um, for those of you who left questions there, right, um, I will be answering them. I will be looking through them and answering them tomorrow. However, Orca Torch is already on it. So you get a boat, best of both worlds. Okay, now uh, back to the giveaway. So let's move on to the giveaway. Okay, so the giveaway, right, uh, we have, okay, we need the names from Orca Torch. So do send us the names so that we can put it into the spin wheel. This is how the spin wheel looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, we have spin wheel. Okay, this is how it works. We're going to do a test. So my producer is going to go over to the, uh, the spin wheel. She's going to do a spin. And you will see it spinning. And a name, the winner's name will be displayed on the top. It's a bit small and at the bottom, which is much bigger, right? So you know that you've won. Okay. Oh goodness. Uh, what I see here is uh, a lot of names. Actually, we just need ten. <laughs> okay, we're going to just select the first ten. We're going to select the first ten. So, um, okay, my producer, you know, she's uh, she's going to be working really hard on this. Let's give her a, a short break. Um, she's going to do it, you have, you have to do it uh, one by one, right? It's easier. Yeah, she's going to do it one by one. So um, maybe, uh, let me see if I can read the questions off my phone. If you've got any questions and we'll see if I can answer them. So if you've got comments, uh, um, maybe I can help you with. Uh, do sound off. So are there any... Uh, are there any people, anybody who are going, who are interested in doing underwater videos? Um, do let us know in the comments. I feel that uh, being good at your diving skills will help you out a lot when it comes to underwater video because, um, like I said, one of the most important thing about shooting good underwater videos is stability. You've got to be able to hold your camera steady for at least five seconds at least at the very least you've got to be you know and um, uh, of course the longer you hold it there the better it is then you get to pick which part of the video you'd like to include into your final edited version so um, when i first started i think the the toughest for me as a underwater cameraman when i first started um, a lot, I face a lot of difficulty when it came, comes to buoyancy. So I think um, if you have a good dive instructor or a good dive master to help you out with your buoyancy, that would, that would help you out a lot so that you will stay level. You stay level so that you don't go up and down, right? You see, when it comes to underwater video lights, right? When you, come, when it, when you talk about underwater video lights, um, do you need to get the brightest? Because the D5, the D530V over here, right, is, I, I would say this is, this is great for uh, first timers. When you first start off with uh, underwater video, this is a good light to start off with because it's not too heavy. Actually, it's, it's very light. So it's actually, I feel it's lighter than the D530 dive torch, 
right? So, so the D530 is actually very light. And because it's light, it's not as bright, right? It's not as bright. So try to approach your subjects. Try to go close to your subjects. Okay, of course, in your camera settings, try to make your camera uh, more sensitive to light so that you, you don't have to have too bright, too bright lights, right? And um, what's, when you first start off as underwater video, underwater photo, I think um, it's great to be able to pick your subjects. And what's, what, what do you think is, are good subjects to, to shoot? Personally, I feel that uh, learning how to firm anemone fishes, you know, clownfish, uh, Nemo, right? I find that these guys, they don't wander far from their nest. So you've got a, a, a bunch of anemones, right? And no matter what, they will always be around the anemone. Like sometimes maybe like they, they may, the, the, the more aggressive ones may tend to go like one meter away, but they will always circle back, you know? So it's very, today you see this family of anemone fishes, tomorrow when you dive the same spot, they're still going to be there, you know? So I think uh, anemone fishes are the best to learn uh, underwater video. If you're a first timer, right? Look for a family of anemone fishes, and then you can just take your time and film them. Because they're really easy to spot. I mean, some of you could say, hey, if you're looking for subjects which don't move much, nudie brunk, right? Nudie brunk don't move. I, I mean, they move, but they're like snails, so sea slugs, so they, they stay in the same place. Yeah, but tomorrow, when you go back there, you may not see them again, right? And Anemone fishes have character, you know, they, have, have you seen them go up to you and try to chase you away because you're getting too close? Have you seen their fangs? Right, they have character. So some are very timid, some are shy, some are timid, they, they, they welcome you, they let you come closer, right? So I think anemone fishes are, are great as, a, how do I call it, starter subjects to, to take, to give you more experience Try firming anemone fishes. What do you guys think? Okay, we're still waiting. So, um, those of you who've been with us, right, stay, right, stay, because we're gonna do the giveaway. So we don't want you to be going off and missing all this. You've been with us from the start. So just hang on a little bit more. We're we're almost there. You know, now we're going to like the the tent name. Yeah, yeah kind of there already. So just hang on for a bit. <coughs> Give me about, okay, how about 30, do you think 30 seconds is enough? 30 seconds? One minute? One minute? Yeah, just one minute. Stay one minute. <coughs> so um, let's see. Um, besides the, what other subjects do you think would be great to firm besides anemone fish? Ah, let's see. Oh, this is great, this is great. Who said that? The steels. Clayton? Clayton, right? <coughs> Charlene. Charlene, okay. Charlene, before your, before your comment disappears, Charlene says, I've learned that sometimes you can get really good steels from your videos. Uh, okay, sometimes you can get really good steels from your videos. What else did she say? From your videos. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, Charlene says, sometimes you can get good photos, stills, right, from your videos. Uh, what Charlene is saying is that, um, okay, she, she shot some videos. She, saw, she shot some videos, and when she's looking through her videos, she feels that, hey, this can be made into a photo. One part of it can be made into a photo, right? A video, a one second video has 25 frames in Malaysia. In uh, US, it's 30 frames, but that's besides the point. One second of video has 25 frames. So, each one of those frames are actually a photo. Now, if you shoot in a high resolution enough camera, like maybe in 4K, or if you're not 
going to print out a huge size, you can turn your parts of your videos into photos. That is, that is true, Charlene. Yes, I agree. And she said sometimes her photos um, turns out blurry. I'm guessing, uh, is it because of uh, the shutter speed is a, a little bit slow? Because marine life tend to move quite fast, right? Is it because the shutter speed is a little bit low, which means you can make it higher? Or is it uh, because of the focusing? Were you too close? Because if you're too close, um, all cameras have a minimum focus distance. That means anything closer than one feet, for example, right? Anything closer than one feet, no matter what you do, it's still going to be blur. You know, is, 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 it, is it that you're too close? I know I did say that to get as close as possible, right? <laughs> so, could be a shutter speed issue, right? <clears throat> okay, we've got... Ah, we've, we've... Oh, okay, guys, we've got a new set of names. I don't know why Orca Torch is sending us a new set of names. I think they've gone through all your interaction and they feel that, you know, you guys, this, these are the names that uh, they want to enter in. Okay, now, let me see if I can, because, uh, let me see if I can locate some of your questions. <clears throat> Do we have any other comments? Okay, let me see. There's uh, comments, comments, comments. Do we have any questions? Uh, do they have any other questions that uh, that I can help out with? Okay, she's still busy with the name, so it's short one more. We're going to be going for the lucky draw soon. <coughs> hey, yeah, I forgot to ask you guys, right? Um, can you guys can you guys already dive? Just uh, put the names in. Can you guys already dive? Uh, in Malaysia, um, the way I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this is we cannot travel to another state. So, because I'm in a city, which is Kuala Lumpur area, we cannot travel to the islands. Kuala Lumpur is like right in the middle of Malaysia, right? So, any, if, if you want to go to the ocean, you need to travel to another state. So, we're not allowed to do that. So, we can't dive. Unless we're already in the island, right? Then you probably could dive. But I'm not so sure about... I mean, it's, right now, it's against the law to go out of our state, uh, to, go, to travel to another state. So, it's against the law. So, how about you guys over there? Give us about 30 seconds. 3, 0, 30 seconds and we're good to go. Okay, just two more names. Two more names. Okay. So is this ten? No, we have ten. Okay, so let's do ten names. Ten names and let's get ready to spin the wheel. <coughs> I will explain to you, right? Um, I will explain to you let me explain to you some of the, the giveaway conditions. Okay, let's see. The first one is... Okay, so we're going to have one random winner and you're going to be carrying back a D530V with the snoot. So this is the snoot package, right? Secondly, the winner's name is going to appear on the spin wheel and also down there, in, it's going to be huge, so down there you'll, you'll see your name. Okay, um, so Orca Torch will be contacting you uh, to arrange for delivery of the torch. So I, I know you guys are ready. Uh, how about us? Are we ready? We're good to go? Okay, so we're going to be spinning the wheel really soon. So I'm just going to disappear from the screen for a bit. In three, two, one, spin. The wheel is spinning, and who do you think will be the lucky winner for tonight? One winner will be bringing back, one lucky draw winner will be bringing back, oh, Van Laken Bart. 
Van Luckenbart. You are the lucky winner. Congratulations. You are the lucky draw winner for tonight. You'll be bringing back a D530V with the snoot. It's going to look, it's, it looks like this. Right. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. It's confirmed, right? Okay, great. So, uh, Orca Torch will be contacting you shortly. And uh, I guess you can look forward to this in the mail. Yeah? Okay, so um, if there, if, uh, uh, is there any... Uh, okay, so these are Orca Torch social media handles. Right? On Facebook, it's Orca Torch. On Instagram, it's Orca Torch. Website is orcatorch.com. And anything pertaining to support and service, uh, you can contact service at orcatorch.com. So these are their social media handles. They are really active. Uh, they've got uh, Facebook groups all over the world. So if you're in Poland, for example, uh, maybe you can join the Poland one and uh, Malaysia has one as well. So uh, yeah, so these are the social media handles. Do we have any comments? My producer just did this. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see, let's see what she... Uh, <laughs> Somebody missed it. Congrats. I still like him. <laughs> ah, I've been like trying not to mention his name tonight because I forgot. Shamik. Shamik. Sh Shamik, correct? <laughs> nice to have you back. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, Shamik, I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type in your name and I'm going to listen and see how to pronounce your name. Right? Sorry. Okay, so um, I think this is it for tonight. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for the whole night. Uh, sorry if you miss your dinner. Uh, we're night here, so I've done my dinner. But thank you so much for joining us. And really important, right, Monica? Sorry about your, you know, the the, the lockdown conditions you are in. Everyone, please stay safe. And uh, we we're looking forward to the opening season, as in when we can all dive. We're all looking forward to that. But most importantly, now we just have to stay safe. So, it's Baron here, live streaming for Orca Torch from Malaysia here all the way to China. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'll see you in the next live. Good night. Stay safe.